Well, the UK has also struggled with inflation over the past year, in large part because of energy costs, the same driver of inflation in the EU. But other factors, including Brexit and a standoff between suppliers and grocers, has created something more alarming in recent weeks. Visible food shortages. Take a look. Not much here. Empty boxes, a handful of tomatoes, a few cucumbers. Enough to make a salad, but certainly not enough for all the salads people in this London neighborhood wanted to make. Stores have put buying limits on fresh groceries. It's a problem for families and for restaurants. The shortage makes us to change from tomato-based to wide-based sauces. Because what can we do? We, we have to make a profit. While bad weather in Spain and Morocco has affected their salad exports, UK farmers are not able to make up for the shortfall. That's because of high energy prices and traditionally low food prices that cut their margins. We were talking about this this time last year. I don't think nothing was being heard very much. It's only because now you're seeing empty shelves that, um, yeah, we're talking about it again. Even worse, there is no end in sight. More shortages are expected. Apple farmers have not been buying plants and planting more orchards. So there will be a shortage of that Why at some point. They? Because they can't afford to. They're not getting the price. Empty shelves are something Brits may have to get used to. Kai Neufeld is head of forecasting at the Center for Economics and Business Research in London. He joins us from his home in Germany. Kai, thank you for coming on to the show. Um, you know, energy costs have been high across Europe. Why isn't the continent seeing the same shortages as the UK is seeing right now? Yeah, that's completely right. You mentioned there's a few common factors here, the high energy prices that uh, farmers are exposed to. You know, energy and natural gas in particular is also needed for the production of fertilizer. So that's a common factor. And you would expect, you know, farmers all across Europe to be um, exposed to that and to suffer from that. But UK is suffering in particular, um, mainly because of Brexit-related factors. So on the one hand, you have lower food production in the UK uh, because uh, seasonal workers can't come into the country as easily because um, freedom of movement has gone with Brexit. There's also uh, a changeover in the um, system of subsidies that are being paid out because the uh, UK is moving out of the EU's common agricultural policy. So there's a few kind of Brexit and UK specific factors that uh, are at play here. To what extent was this visible as it approached? There was this one grower in the piece we just saw who said, hey, the same thing was going on last year. We just didn't see the shortages. Is this something that should have been seen coming? Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, the industry growers um, and farmers have warned about this and have um, you know, made it very clear to the government that food security cannot be taken as, as granted, that there needs to be policy support, um, especially, you know, the lack of uh, seasonal workers, that it's going to be harder. That's something that you could really see already, that this was going to be an issue. And I guess, you know, in, in the past years, um, increased imports have um, filled that gap of a lack of domestic production in the UK. And, you know, while, um, uh, while supplies were abundant, you know, while um, weather conditions were good for growers in, in, in Spain and the north of Africa. Um, the, the bird flu as well is another um, kind of global or European factor that has not, you know, had such a huge impact as it is having now. Um, you know, the situation was still manageable, but now with a lot of shocks coming to the European um, agricultural market, you know, Brexit is revealing the weaknesses in the UK and the UK policymakers need to step up. At the same time, grocers have been loath to pay suppliers more as they compete for market share against one another. Are higher prices one of the clear ways out of this to encourage more growing as well? Higher prices that households are going to have to bear? Yeah, that is that, that would be one of the market solutions, clearly. If, um, you know, if um, you know, growers get that price signal that it's um, worth to plant more. Um, you know, that is that is a, a strong, you know, in, in incentive to ramp up production domestically as well. But there's still, you know, there's still the limiting factors on the supply side. Um, the, the labor supply is an issue. If you can't get the people to pick the fruit and veg, um, you know, also higher prices are not really um, helping, at least not in the short term. You know, it would need to um, persist for a long period so that you could pay higher wages so that it's worthwhile for people to come here. Um, so so it, it's going to take a while, I think, for, for this to, to, to settle out. And um, a lot of the 
um, suppliers are, as you said, kind of in the market to reduce volatility. You don't want kind of prices mm. going up and down a lot. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see how quickly they can settle. All right. That's Kai Neufeld with the Center for Economics and Business Research. Thank you. Thanks for having me.